Nothing the political establishment will not do, no lie that they won't tell, to hold their prestige and power at your expense. And that's what's been happening. The Washington establishment and the financial and media corporations that fund it exist for only one reason, to protect and enrich itself. The establishment has trillions of dollars at stake in this election. As an example, just one single trade deal they'd like to pass involves trillions of dollars controlled by many countries, corporations, and lobbyists. For those who control the levers of power in Washington and for the global special interest, they partner with these people that don't have your good in mind. Our campaign represents a true existential threat, like they haven't seen before. This is not simply another four-year election. This is a crossroads in the history of our civilization that will determine whether or not we, the people, reclaim control over our government. The political establishment that is trying to stop us is the same group responsible for our disastrous trade deals, massive illegal immigration, and economic and foreign policies that have bled our country dry. For them, it's war. And for them, nothing at all is out of bounds. This is a struggle for the survival of our nation, believe me. This election will determine whether we're a free nation or whether we have only the illusion of democracy, but are in fact controlled by a small handful of global special interests rigging the system, and our system is rigged. This is reality. You know it, they know it, I know it, and pretty much the whole world knows it. The establishment and their media enablers will control over this nation through means that are very well known. Anyone who challenges their control is deemed a sexist, a racist, a xenophobe, and morally deformed. They will attack you. They will slander you. They will seek to destroy your career and your family. They will seek to destroy everything about you, including your reputation. They will lie, 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 and then again, they will do worse than that. They will do whatever's necessary. The Clintons are criminals, remember that, they're criminals. Our great civilization, here in America and across the civilized world, has come upon a moment of reckoning. We've seen it in the United Kingdom, where they voted to liberate themselves from global government and global trade deals and global immigration deals that have destroyed their sovereignty and have destroyed many of those nations. But the central base of world political power is right here in America. And it is our corrupt political establishment that is the greatest power behind the efforts at radical globalization and the disenfranchisement of working people. Their financial resources are virtually unlimited. Their political resources are unlimited. Their media resources are unmatched. And most importantly, the depths of their immorality is absolutely unlimited. ...to deleting your account, to just walking away.
from this platform you've been so critical of? Well, you know, if uh, you weren't fake, I would not uh, even think about it. I would do that in a heartbeat. I'm real, but the, sir. The news, uh, the news is fake. The choices that Twitter makes when it chooses to suppress, edit, blacklist, shadow, ban, are editorial decisions, pure and simple. They're editorial decisions. In those moments, Twitter ceases to be a neutral public platform, and they become an editor with a viewpoint. What they choose to fact-check and what they choose to ignore or even promote is nothing more than a political activism group or political activism, and it's inappropriate. Today, I'm signing an executive order to protect and uphold the free speech and rights of the American people. Currently, social media giants like Twitter receive an unprecedented liability shield based on the theory that they're a neutral platform. My executive order calls for new regulations under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act to make it that social media companies that engage in censoring or any political conduct will not be able to keep their liability shield. I would do that in a heartbeat. There's nothing I'd rather do than get rid of my whole Twitter account, but I'm able to get to, I guess, 186 million people when you add up all the different accounts and uh, add Facebook and Instagram. It's a lot of people, and that's more than uh, the media companies have, frankly, by a lot. And so if I get a story that's wrong, I can put a uh, social media I, — I don't usually use the word Twitter. I use — I say social media. But I put something out, and uh, the next day, or the next hour, or the next minute, everybody's reading about it. So I'm able to refute fake news, and that's very important. Thank you. I'm here today to talk about our relationship with China and several new measures to protect American security and prosperity. China's pattern of misconduct is well known. For decades, they've ripped off the United States like no one has ever done before. Hundreds of billions of dollars a year were lost dealing with China, especially over the years during the prior administration. China raided our factories, offshored our jobs, gutted our industries, stole our intellectual property, and violated their commitments under the World Trade Organization. To make matters worse, they are considered a developing nation, getting all sorts of benefits that others, including the United States, are not entitled to. But I have never solely blamed China for this. They were able to get away with the theft like no one was able to get away with before because of past politicians and, frankly, past presidents. But unlike those who came before, my administration negotiated and fought for what was right. It's called fair and reciprocal treatment. China has also unlawfully claimed territory in the Pacific Ocean, threatening freedom of navigation and international trade. And they broke their word to the world on ensuring the autonomy of Hong Kong. The United States wants an open and constructive relationship with China, but achieving that relationship requires us to vigorously defend our national interests. The Chinese government has continually violated its promises to us and so many other nations. These plain facts cannot be overlooked or swept aside. The world is now suffering as a result of the malfeasance of the Chinese government. China's cover-up of the Wuhan virus allowed the disease to spread all over the world instigating a global pandemic that has cost more than 100,000 American lives and over a million lives worldwide. Chinese officials ignored their reporting obligations to the World Health Organization and pressured the World Health Organization to mislead the world when the virus was first discovered by Chinese authorities. Countless lives have been taken, and profound economic hardship has been inflicted all around the globe. They strongly recommended against me doing the early ban from China, but I did it anyway and was proven to be 100 percent correct. China has total control over the World Health Organization, despite only paying $40 million per year compared to what the United States has been paying which is approximately 450 
$1.5 million a year. We have detailed the reforms that it must make and engage with them directly, but they have refused to act. Because they have failed to make the requested and greatly needed reforms, we will be today terminating our relationship with the World Health Organization and redirecting those funds to other worldwide and deserving urgent global public health needs. The world needs answers from China on the virus. We must have transparency. Why is it that China shut off infected people from Wuhan to all other parts of China? It went nowhere else. It didn't go to Beijing. It went nowhere else. But they allowed them to freely travel throughout the world, including Europe and the United States. The death and destruction caused by this is incalculable. We must have answers, not only for us, but for the rest of the world. This pandemic has underscored the crucial importance of building up America's economic independence, reshoring our critical supply chains, and protecting America's scientific and technological advances. For years, the government of China has conducted illicit espionage to steal our industrial secrets, of which there are many. Today, I will issue a proclamation to better secure our nation's vital university research and to suspend the entry of certain foreign nationals from China who we have identified as potential security risks. I am also taking action to protect the integrity of America's financial system, by far the best in the world. I am instructing my presidential working group on financial markets to study the differing practices of Chinese companies listed on the U.S. financial markets with the goal of protecting American investors. Investment firms should not be subjecting their clients to the hidden and undue risks associated with financing Chinese companies that do not play by the same rules. Americans are entitled to fairness and transparency. Several of the most significant actions we're taking pertain to deeply troubling situations unfolding in Hong Kong. This week, China unilaterally imposed control over Hong Kong security. This was a plain violation of Beijing's treaty obligations with the United Kingdom in the Declaration of 1984 and explicit provisions of Hong Kong's basic law. It has 27 years to go. The Chinese government's move against Hong Kong is the latest in a series of measures that are diminishing the city's long-standing and very proud status. This is a tragedy for the people of Hong Kong, the people of China, and indeed the people of the world. China claims it is protecting national security. But the truth is that Hong Kong was secure and prosperous as a free society. Beijing's decision reverses all of that. It extends the reach of China's invasive state security apparatus into what was formerly a bastion of liberty. China's latest incursion, along with other recent developments that degraded the territory's freedoms, makes clear that Hong Kong is no longer sufficiently autonomous to warrant the special treatment that we have afforded the territory since the handover. China has replaced its promise formula of one country, two systems, with one country, one system. Therefore, I am directing my administration to begin the process of eliminating policy exemptions that give Hong Kong different and special treatment. My announcement today will affect the full range of agreements we have with Hong Kong from our extra- Work, we have employees. We have paychecks to issue. We have bills to pay. The only stores open are Walmart? That's ridiculous. It's time to open up. The sick are being taken care of. If you're sick, stay home and in your house. The ones that can work need to work. Elsewhere, desperation. Check this monster lineup for food in Austin, Texas, with handouts to those who've already run out of everything. And outside Los Angeles, more cars in the many hundreds said one volunteer they'll keep giving until the food runs out.
will be the comeback kids. Tonight, Donald Trump said there's been enough progress on COVID that he'll announce tomorrow new guidelines on reopening the economy. We want to get our country back, and we're going to do it, and we're going to do it soon. Health officials have warned reopening too soon risks a resurgence of COVID. These images are from Maryland just this week. And Washington... Wear it in a situation where you cannot or are not maintaining social distancing. Still, Trump said tonight the U.S., which leads the world in coronavirus deaths, is now past the peak on new cases. He said his announcement tomorrow, perhaps... small number of people in the scheme of things protesting to begin with, uh, very few of whom committed acts of violence, but that few was systematic in their efforts to harm police officers and to create damage to police vehicles, to storefronts, to other property. And again, that's not going to get us anywhere. But now it is time for people to go home. Smart guy, where's the fire? Over there. Oh, okay, you just bought yourself a 317, pointing out police stupidity. Or is that a 314? No, no, a 314 is a dog, uh, in. No, or is that a 315? You're in trouble, pal.